So what do we find? I always try to save this for last. You've seen, probably everybody got the Perry paper before I did, so uh, I don't get the Perry paper. So um, this is um, last year's number. It's about 0.1. Um, why can I not say the number in my head now? I, I, I talk in different numbers, and I apologize for that, but um, last year was about average. So the green line on this, the target, um, is about 0.1. The long-term average, you can barely see my pointer, is about 0.15 scallops per square meter. Um, so 0.1 is our target. That's about 60 scallops in our old survey. It's about 20 scallops in our new survey um, per transect. Um, the long-term average is really skewed by some of these very good years. And so when I talk to, again, when I talk to management, they get a little queasy about that. Um, so I put median on here. What median is, if you're not familiar with median, is half the years are better than that and half the years are less than that. And so the median is right around what I consider my personal target is about 60 scallops per 600 square meters. What that says is you've got to swim about 10 meters to find a scallop. Um, try to put it in terms um, that we know. And so the number is about a third of what we would hope to see. I am going to couch that um, in that Probably some of you can see there's a pattern that goes up and down, and it's about an eight-year cycle. Um, the other thing is that one of the things people saw in the survey this year is that the scallops were a little bit small when we surveyed around the 1st of June. So whether or not that number is perfectly accurate, we don't know. What I can tell you is there are more stations with less scallops this year. Um, this is a, a distribution study. Distribution is just how many stations did we sample that had scallops. Um, in a good year, every place you stop in Dixie Taylor County has a scallop, and that's actually common here. No matter where you go, if you swim for five or ten minutes, you're going to find a scallop, no matter how shallow, no matter how deep. Um, some years we don't get that. And so what we used to set as a target, we're, not, we're kind of moving away from that now, is that at least half the stations in a stable population have scallops. Um, those are the blue lines. You still have that. You still have about 75% of the places that our team went, when they went swimming, um, they found a scallop. Doesn't mean they found a lot of scallops, but most of the places that you're going to go have some scallops. There may be less than typical. They may be deeper. They may be harder to find, but they're still there. Um, the thing that worries me a little bit is, is called these dense patches. Remember I talked about the fact that you have to have two scallops to spawn? Well, what you see is that the scallops are not only a little bit less abundant, but they're really spread out. And so you don't, what we found in our survey doesn't mean you guys won't find patches, is that we found less patches than normal. So it's going to be a little bit harder to jump in the water and get uh, what my coworkers call, call, they call them sixfers, three scallops in each hand. So you dive down. Every time you dive, you get three scallops in each hand, which is as many as most people can hold. If you have big hands, sometimes you can hold four, but um, getting eight scallops on one dive is, is a lot, so, uh, but some people can do it. So I don't want to be overly concerned because, again, you know, we can only survey 50 places out of 300,000 acres because we do both counties. So um, there may be patches. I can never tell you in any given year, is it better, deeper, shallower? What I can tell you is that we did find a little bit more in Taylor County than Dixie County this year, so it may be a little bit better north. One of the things that we had heard was that Suwannee was really wet early. Um, and so it could be that just down towards pepperfish, it got a little too wet for scallops. Again, that's a natural, mostly natural process. Um, we can talk about that off mic if you want. But um, again, a little, bit, a little bit fewer scallops and a little bit less than you would want. So some kind of closing notes. I like to throw in a little bit of safety notes. I'm probably talking too long already. Um, this is a picture from last year, I think, on opening day. Um, no matter what time you plan to go out, the weather really doesn't care. Um, <laughs> it's, it's something to always keep in mind. The storm may come at 10, um, and it's really, um, it's not hysterical. It's really terrifying. But um, to watch what happens when boats are going out and coming in at the same time, it's, it can be really dangerous. Um, some of these storms are not worth running away from. They're just a rain shower, and some of them have lightning. And so a lot of you have phones. A lot of you probably know the waters better than me. Um, again, it's use your judgment. Don't go out if you see thunderstorms coming early. Wait until after lunch. Um, use your judgment and keep an eye on the sky always. Number one thing I try to always point out is um, this is a great family activity. I have seen three and four generations 
present on boats doing this galloping. So it's a great way to connect generations. It's a great way to have family fun. Um, some years I put pictures in here. You don't have to just scallop. There are shells out there to collect. There's critters to see. A lot of people have underwater cameras, GoPros and stuff now. Go take pictures. Um, the goal should always be to have fun and not fill your cooler full of meat um, because there's a lot of other stuff to do out there other than just fill your cooler with scallop meat. So um, try to always remember that. And uh, with that, I'll just end it there.